Is Fashionsta in some financial trouble? Are they having tax issues or is it due to COVID restrictions? We are going to talk about everything right now along with what you need to do with your banking institution to get your money back. So if you're ready, let's do this. <laughs> Welcome back, you guys. If you're new here, my name is Alexandra, and I apologize that I'm coming to you under these circumstances. I wish they were better circumstances. This is definitely not a video that I wanted to make by any means, but you guys have a right to know what is going on, and I know there's a lot of rumors and speculations right now going on with Fashionsta, the box, or Shop Fashionsta, the box, the box by Fashionsta, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Basically, they have not been shipping out their customers their boxes, so they are missing their December box, their January box, and I know a lot of people had uh, commented and said that they got charged for February, but when I went to all of my friends that are still subscribed to a Fashion Stuff and I had them check their accounts for a February charge, they were not charged for February. So double check and make sure if you were charged for February or not. If you were and you have proof of that and you'd like to email it to me, I will put my email down below in the description box. But as of right now, from what I understand, it's just December and January that they were missing. Now, they have shut down their website. They have shut down their influencer app. Um, I have tried contacting their owner. I do have their owner's direct uh, email. I've tried reaching out to them that way. I've tried reaching out to them via Instagram. I've given them well over a week and I have not had a response, which is very unlike them. So the first thing that I want to say is I hope nothing bad has happened to Shadi, the owner, because he's always replied back. Every time I've ever emailed him about anything, it might take him a day or two, but a week, no. So the first thing I want to say is I hope nothing bad has happened to them. I don't have any confirmation on anything, you guys. I have looked, I have called all of my connections in California. And again, as I said, I did email Shadi personally and tell him that, you know, I can help him if he needs some help. Let, you know, let me know what's going on and I can help you because I do have connections out in California. If it's just a matter of he's missing some products and things, I can get him some products. But um, I think that it's a financial situation. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I know a lot of people were saying that it's because of all the COVID restrictions. But the problem with that is the COVID restrictions in California, a majority of them, have been lifted for quite some time. Not to mention the fact that since they've been lifted, you know, Fashionsa has managed to get out several boxes since then. So I don't think that's the issue. Now, I know that a lot of companies are having problems getting products shipped to them. Like there's a lot of shipment delays just because of everything going on right now with our, our shipments and all that stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. But uh, again, if it was just a matter of he was missing a product or two, again, I think he would have came on and let everybody know on Facebook, on Instagram, or send out an email or a text as they usually do and let you guys know, hey, we're missing a product due to shipment delays. So next month, there's going to be an extra product in the box. I'm so sorry, but I at least want to get your, your December box out to you. So I don't think that it's a COVID restriction thing. I'm going to be completely honest. I think it's financial. I think it's either A, taxes, because if you guys have not noticed, um, you do not get taxed for your box. Uh, you just pay either $19.99 or $24.99, but you don't pay taxes and you don't pay shipping, which means they are eating the tax costs. They are eating the shipping costs. And that adds up very quickly, especially depending on where you live. You guys know where, you know, what your tax bracket is like here where I live, it's 7.5%. So, you know, to have to pay that on each person or, you know, up to 8%, I know like in Connecticut, it, it's just, it's a lot of money. And 
I don't know if they were just skipping out on their taxes altogether and they just didn't file them. But I do know that Biden did beef up the IRS last year. So I would not be surprised that somebody came a knocking eventually. And I know with a lot of states, you know, you get a lot of chances to pay your taxes. But with California, they are very quick to empty a bank account. And I know this for a fact because I know another subscription box who has had their bank account emptied several times by the IRS for the same reason. And that's also why they have their subscription box now in their boyfriend's name. So I know they're quick about that. Now, the other thing that very well may be going on here, and again, this is all speculation because I don't have anything confirmed. Again, I tried reaching out to everyone I know just to find out what's going on. And the only thing that I can find out and have been told is that it's just financial troubles and they don't have the money to keep going. Now, you might be thinking, well, what happened to my money? So we paid for the boxes. Why didn't they use that money to buy the products? And we all know that's obviously what they were doing. That's kind of why they were behind because Basically, they would charge you guys every month for their box, for your box, and then they would take that money and pay for the products that was going in the box because they did not have a reserve. I mean, they did not. They were, I can tell you right now, I know for a fact, they were $40,000 in debt. What was that? A year and a half, two years ago. That is when they quit their influencer program. That's also when they started um, just doing free boxes instead of paying influencers who, you know, uh, doing like an affiliate program, they just started doing the free boxes. So I know when that switched over and also when their men's box started, they were about 40 grand in debt at that point. Um, now what happens is a lot of cosmetic companies and brands will let you create an account with them. So they'll go ahead and ship you the products and basically, basically you can start a tap with them. So they'll start shipping you the products. And then as you get the boxes shipped out and get payments, then you pay them. But with a subscription box, it works a little differently because you obviously get the money up front, which is what Shop Fashion So was doing. And then they were paying their tab or paying their bill or not paying for the products until they got payment for each box, which is why most months they were very late shipping their boxes out because they didn't have the products until they got the money for the boxes. And that's kind of how that works. But I do know of, again, other boxes that have gotten into financial trouble by starting a tab or starting several tabs. I do know, like for instance, BG Beauty Box, she owes several companies uh, money right now where she started tabs and then never paid them. And eventually the company can obviously go after you civilly. Some companies just write it off. It just really depends on the brand, how big they are, how much they really want their money back. So I don't know if there's an issue like that going on with Fashion stuff. Again, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's the tax thing. All I know is obviously they are not shipping their boxes out. So what can you guys do? The first thing I know a lot of people were saying, you know, rate them, you know, a file a complaint with the BBB. You can obviously do that if they, if they have already had their account cleaned by the IRS and or if they've already shut down, which it kind of looks like they have. Um, I don't know how much good that's going to do you or how far that's going to go. Obviously, it never hurts to do it, but I don't know how far you're going to get with that. The biggest thing I would do, if you have been charged for December and January, you can file a complaint with your bank. You can go all the way back to 90 days, okay? So this is very important to do it now, especially for like December. And some banks, it's six months now, I know if it's past 90 days, there's a different process. And again, you'll have to talk to your banking institution. Mine personally, like I have USAA, I can go back a year. I can, you know, dispute any transaction up to a year. Again, some banks it's six months, some banks it's 90 days. So you need to dispute the transaction. That's what it's called. It's called a dispute. So you need to file a dispute on the transaction where they charged you and then the bank usually will at that point give you your money back while they investigate. 
And while they're investigating, what they do is they attempt to contact the company and the company has to provide shipping confirmation that not only was it shipped, but that it was delivered to your address. So they have to show proof of delivery to your address. If they cannot provide proof of delivery to your address, then the bank obviously takes the money from them. And I do know after so many disputes are filed with one company, there is usually a larger scale investigation filed by the actual banks. So I would everybody all at one time, go ahead, as soon as you click out of this video, call your bank, get online, whatever you gotta do, file a dispute on the December and January's charges. If you were charged for February, February two, but file a dispute, say, hey, listen, they took my money, they never shipped my stuff, it's been over 60 days. And that's another thing, normally banks, you know, will give them because there are shipping delays. There are things that ha have, ha you know, happened sometimes. So the fact that it's been like for December has been well over 60 days, that's going to be a problem for them. So usually a bank is going to, like I said, automatically go ahead and refund your money at that point in time. So again, file a dispute. If everybody files one and they get so many going to the same bank account, that bank, whoever owns you know, whatever banking institution they're using for that account, if they get too many disputes, they will lock down their banking institution account, okay? I know this for a fact. So go ahead and do it. File disputes. I'm telling you to right now. I hate to do this. I really, really do. I like Shadi. I like the company. I hope nothing bad happened to him. I was really rooting for them. However, you know, I feel like not telling customers what the hell is going on and just, you know, ghosting everybody, shutting down your website, deleting comments on Facebook, deleting comments on Instagram. That's not cool. He knows better than that. Uh, you know, again, it could be something bad happened to him and somebody else is running the show and they just said, screw this, it's too much work. I'm just gonna take the money and run. Hopefully that's not the case. I also hope though that they're not in the, some kind of financial, you know, trouble, but if they, obviously didn't pay their taxes or, you know, do what they were supposed to do, then they've got nobody uh, to blame but themselves for that. And it, it stinks. The subscription box community as a whole has really declined in the last couple of years, especially due to COVID and everything that has gone on and a lot of the regulations and then all the shipping issues and just, just everything compounded. You know what I mean? So, and the demand for subscription boxes, like people are being a lot less wasteful with makeup and uh, skincare and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, I know I myself canceled almost all of my boxes. I only have two, that's it. And one is a quarterly box that I get every four months, which or three months, which is uh, fab that fun, which by the way, I do have an unboxing of that coming up here soon. But uh, back to this, yeah, subscription box demand has really declined. The community has really declined. People are just not uh, being as wasteful with their spending, especially with not knowing what's going on and politics and just COVID and everything right now. It's just a hot mess. And, you know, it's not a time that people are super wasteful with their money or splurging, you know, on things like subscription boxes. And I think that's really a hurt, you know, all of the subscription boxes. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see more dominoes fall. I mean, Ipsy and BoxyCharm one day, <laughs> I have a feeling their day is coming because I know uh, they've lost quite a few subscribers as well. So, and as you guys have seen with BoxyCharm's base box, what do you see in it? Indie brands, why? Because it is really hard to get name brand products for five, for three dollars you know that people know and love in every box 12 boxes a year every single year a lot of cosmetic companies right now are not wanting to give subscription boxes products for cost so this is a lot going on and so yeah there's been a downfall and a serious decline in subscription boxes as a whole and I would venture to guess that that's obviously probably playing a role in what's going on right now with shop fashion and stuff. Shadi, if you're listening, I really hope you reach out. I could help you. You know, I would have helped you. You know, I would have. I mean, um, I hate to see this happen to you guys, but 
again, fair is fair. And, you know, if your guys are screwing customers, that shit ain't right, man. You know better. And uh, I hate to, hate to tell everybody that they need to, you know, file disputes. But y'all need to file disputes because, I mean, that is the equivalent of a scam. It is what it is. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, my channel is here for you guys, not for the companies. I mean, I will always support a good company if they're doing what's right, you know, and I will stand up for them as I have for a fashion set in the past. But also, if they're doing something wrong, I'm going to stand up and say something about that as well. So it is what it is. All right, you guys, I, again, hate coming to you under these uh, types of circumstances, but you know, this is what we do here at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, I hate to see it, but, you know, that's life, I guess. So anyways, uh, I've got some new cheerier content coming up for you guys tomorrow and the following day. We've got some indie brand spotlights. I've got a ton of new makeup to review. Oh my God, I have got a new foundation, you guys, that is going to blow your mind. It's like a BBB cream. It's the new one by Patrick Starr. Have you seen it yet? Holy crap. It's amazing. So I'm going to be sharing that with you guys and a ton of other stuff. So anyways, uh, I love you all. I hope you all have a very wonderful day. If you have any questions about how to file a dispute with your bank, uh, feel free to comment down below or email me. Or also, you can always call your bank. They will give you a step-by-step -step direction. And most of it's online now. Most of it is easy and simple, and you don't even have to go in. You can make a phone call or fill out something online and submit it. I know with mine, I have an app, and I could just click, click, dispute, type out my reason why, show my proof, and, you know, and then it's filed. So uh, usually the bank will refund your money depending on, again, your banking institution and their rules and how many disputes you filed and won or lost in the last year. Um, but usually they're pretty quick. It's usually within 24 to 72 hours that they will refund that money while they are doing the investigation on the company. So uh, just to give you an FYI about that. All right. That is all I have for you guys today. Until next time. See y'all.